and what I like. Cause I'm influential. See my rap dog group, they do the same dance I do. Cause I'm influential. Next time you walk through. If you were a fan of Bad Boy Records in the early 2000s, then you'll be very familiar with my guest today. Travell Coleman, better known by his stage name G-Dep, was a major part of the Bad Boy team, with songs like Let's Get It and Special Delivery that lit up the charts and dance clubs around the country. He featured very heavily on P. Diddy's 2001 album, The Saga Continues, and released his debut album, Child of the Ghetto, in 2001. While G. Depp appeared to have it all, he faced interpersonal turmoil stemming from an incident in 1993 where a botched robbery attempt resulted in a shooting that, unbeknownst to him at the time, proved later to be fatal. After years of having the incident weigh on him, he confessed to the incident in 2010 and was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison at Fishkill Correctional Facility in upstate New York. However, 12 years into his sentence in late 2023, G-Dep was awarded clemency and released from prison in April of 2024. But prior to that, he had actually started recording music again. Yes, from behind bars and completed a new album, Influential, that was released in March of 2024, just two weeks before he knew he'd be getting out of prison. I randomly found out about him having an album on Instagram and knowing that he had recorded it in prison, I thought quite honestly, there's no way this is going to be good. Turns out, it's my favorite album of the year so far, and I wanted to know more about how it was created. With that said, here is my one-on-one conversation with G-Dep, where you'll get to hear all about his life, what he's been up to, and learn the the behind-the-scenes of how his influential album came to be. G-Dep, welcome to the show. Hey, peace, peace. Thanks for having me up. You already know. As I've said before on the show, I was quite surprised that uh, when I heard that you got out, that there was already an album that had been recorded in the process of you being in prison. And so when I heard it, I was, I was just blown away by the quality of it in terms of like the, the songwriting, the beat selection, like everything in between. So I want to talk about all that stuff today for people that haven't seen you in a while. uh, Can you give us a brief synopsis of the early part of your career leading up to uh, when you got into prison? Uh, You know, I I, I was like, you know, on on the underground circuit, you know, in Harlem. You know what I'm saying? You know, just just running around doing mixtapes, battling, you know, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Just you know, just a kid trying to get on. You know, I had managers and we was putting music out, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, making demos, running running in the, you know, going to going to labels, you know, camping out in front of labels and you know, trying to give digs. We didn't even know who we was handing the demos to sometime. Like anybody that had a suit on. <laughs> Or it looked like they was a professional. We'd be like, yo, listen to this, and, you know, stuff like that. So I went through all of that. Sooner or later, I started, you know, getting a little more, um, you know, exposure. You know, different people, you know, knew about what we were doing. And, you know, I was getting more opportunities, you know, as time went on. I, I got on Gangstar's album, A Moment of Truth. And then a little bit after that, I signed to uh, Bad Boy. And your early hits with Bad Boy, like what were the, what were some of the earlier songs that you got on with Bad Boy? One Twelve had a remix. I don't know if a lot of people heard that. That was one of the first songs I got on when I went to when I went to uh, went to my we went to uh, the Bahamas. And by the time we got back to the states, it was on the radio. So that was the first the first time I you know I got on on the radio. What was that experience like when you heard yourself on the radio for the first time? Oh man, it was it, it was it was it was wild, man. It was kind of like surreal. I didn't. I, it took me a while to hear it. A lot of people told me, "Yo, I heard the song on the radio with you on one twelve. and I was like, "I was like, wow, really?" Like you know, and it took me a while for some reason I could never catch it. You know what I mean? And then one day I, was, it, it just came on. I forgot where I was at, and it just came on. I was like, "Oh, that's a fact." And so it was it was really a dope thing, man. You know, I think I was I think I was inside. I think I was in my my grandmother's house or something when it came on. So obviously 2001, you exploded because that's when Puffy dropped The Saga Continues. That's when the first big hit came out uh, for Let's Get It with uh, Puffy and Black Rob. When that video dropped and there was like the dancing in the video, you had your slang in it that was, you know, you were rapping in the video and it definitely had an impact on the culture. Like, how did that feel when that song like took off? That was another, you know, surreal feeling, man. It just felt like any, any, uh, you know, movie you've seen with, you know what I mean? Uh, just a guy, just his whole journey and, you know, the, the uh, newness of hearing yourself on the radio and hearing yourself on the radio was, you know, it was, it was just, it was just, just like that. 
You know, I just, uh, you know, I heard it one day, you know, somebody, somebody, uh, came, came through and was bumping it. I'm like, how, how, how was he, how do you have my song? You know what I'm saying? Like, it did, he was like, it was on the radio. Like, you know what I mean? So just to change, the change from, you know, people knowing, you know, because, you know, you can sign to a label, but, you know, people don't know, you know, people, uh, people still won't know who you are. You know what I mean? But once the song came out, you know, people had, you know, things to associate, you know, oh, yo, your name is G. That, so that's you on the radio. You know what I mean? So, you know, I started, I started, um, you know, experiencing that. And you had that song and then you had uh, Special Delivery, which was another classic banger that came out that was also just like taking over every place. You were with Bad Boy for a little bit. And then uh, at some point you were off Bad Boy. Uh, what happened in terms of that process of things? You know, I was being real irresponsible with my, with my, uh, you know, uh, you know, my, my responsibilities. Basically I got dropped. You know what I mean? It was, it was more of a pile at me when you get your, your stuff together. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was, I was doing my own, you know, my own music and stuff like that after, after that point. Okay. Cause I know you dropped out, you, you done a uh, album with Loon and then you actually had another album come out called Ghetto Legend in 2010, I believe. I, I assume those were independent albums. Yeah. Those are independent. Those are independent. One was on, uh, I think Sicken Records. I, I'm, I'm not sure the name. The, the Loon, the G. Depp and Loon album was on something called Sicken or Sicken, something like that. Records, and then the other one was on uh, a joint called uh, Famous Records. You know what I'm saying? Um, distributed out of uh, Florida. We put that out. You know, they and, uh, excuse me. They were distributed by uh, Universal. And, um, you know, the independent deal. I looked on the discography, like it was only a few months from when you dropped your, your second studio album that you decided to uh, turn yourself in. So what happened during that time? And then what made you turn yourself in for various reasons? We, we was dropping the album, we did the album release and everything. And, um, you know, it just made me realize that I was about to go, you know, embark on this new journey with a new, a new album out that I was going to, you know, put my full energy and, and, and attention into, you know, I just wanted to, you know, it made me realize that, okay, you're going to start, you know, a whole nother chapter without still not, you know, resolving your issue or what you have going on and what you've been thinking about and what you've been, you know, what I've been, you know, you know, pondering about all of, all of those years. You know what I mean? So I didn't want to go into that without, you know, at least, you know, having some type of closure on what you know what went what went on that that night, so I decided to you know turn you know when I turned myself in, that was you know one of the reasons because you know it seemed like you know I was starting all over again, and I know what I knew what I went through during the time of my you know my previous releases, and you know I just didn't want to go through that again, you know with that with that you know on my mind, I was trying to move forward. And then when you went to the police station, you didn't know at the time like like what was going to happen as a result of you going to the police station. You were just kind of going there as like an inquiry, correct? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you know, I, I you know, I thought I, I figured that uh, you know, I could um, you know, go there and you know see what was going on. And I like like you said, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was prepared for what could happen, but I didn't, I didn't know, you know, I mean you know, as prepared as you can be, you know what I mean? I was mentally, I mentally, I mentally knew it was a possibility that I might not, you know, walk out of there. You, know? you go there, long story short, uh, you do end up going to jail and I think they sentenced you for like 15 to life or something like that. So uh, in terms of the music side of stuff, you, after that, the your Ghetto Legend album came out, like there was there was nothing in terms of releases or recordings or anything, anything major with it, uh, up until like this past couple of months. So, when when all this stuff was going down and you were going to trial, then you were getting your prison sentence. Were you thinking that you were ever going to try to record music or write music during the trial and all of that? I didn't I didn't really think about music a lot. You know what I mean? It was it was it was kind of the furthest thing from I can't say the furthest thing from my mind. I wrote I was I wrote yeah I'm, I I used to write even during the trial, you know. But it was just one of those things that you know I just wrote because that was you know. You know, writing writing is an affliction, man. You know, you 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 just stuff just comes in your mind and you just put it down. You know what I mean? So, I was also writing a book at that time. So, like, I, yeah, so I was definitely into 
writing and stuff still. You know, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So, you know what I mean? I just was, you know, I just wrote. How, how much, how many songs did you collect between like the, we'll say 2011 up till like this past year? Like, were you writing like every day? Were you writing like, you're like tens of songs, hundreds of songs? Like, like how many songs had you written? Well, I, w- I was writing, you know, after a while, especially when I, once I got up north, I started, I started like a, like a regimen, like, you know what I mean? Like I had like a, you know, a routine and a, 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 a you know, I kind of, I, I held myself to a certain, you know, standard to, you know, what I, what I was going to do. I told myself, okay, just, you know, I, I knew, you know, I had a lot of time to do, so I wasn't really, you know, trying to, you know, write like, you know, for, you know, profusely, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I gave myself a, you know, a, a, a good, a, a, a simple, a simple goal. I said, all right, write, you know, write a, a, a song a month. And um, I think it was three freestyles a month. So at the end of the year, I would have 36 freestyles. Wow. And 12, and 12 songs. You know what I mean? And then I would put those to the side. So I did that for like at least, you know, at least eight years like that. I did that till about 2019. When COVID, when COVID hit, I started writing more. Like I had, I had more songs. Like, you know what I mean? I started writing. So, you know, I started like ending up with like 35 songs a month. You know what I mean? So, you know, then the freestyles I was putting to the side, you know, stuff like that. So, so yeah. So, you know, it just, you just started queuing. So I gave, I gave myself a quota, you know, and, and that's kind of how I, I like accumulated songs. I mean, I had my own, you know, my own regimen in my mind with a, you know what I mean? Like I was, I was, I was my own, I was my, 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 my CEO, my artist, you know what I'm saying? My A&R, you know what I mean? I just, I just, I just, you know, created a whole, you know, you know, process, you know what I'm saying? And that was just, that was my creative, my creative process. You know? Now, during that time, obviously from, you know, 2011 to now, rap itself has gone through a wide variety of changes. Were you keeping up with the stuff that was happening in rap while you were in prison? Yeah, for the most part, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of, you kind of, you kind of get linked in, you know, in there. It's not that hard to, you know, stay abreast of what's going on. Cause you know, hip hop and, you know, music is just everywhere, you know? We had radios, we had television, we were able to watch um, videos. And, you know, you speak to your people on the phone, whoever you talk to, they tell you what's going on. Oh, yo, this, you know, such and such, you know, this this dude, this happened and this happened, you know, or, or you know, or, or, you know, just in, 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 the, in the jail in general, you know, you got people that talk about things that their people told them, you know, oh, yo, I heard this happen and, yo, this one got a new album out and, you know, stuff like that. And then we got the kiosk. They got this thing, you know, in the in the jail, you know, prison kiosk, and you're able to download songs. They introduced that in 2019, and then you know, it just it just it just went crazy, and then like it was a music, it was like a musical renaissance. You know what I'm saying? Like people, you know, because you were able to find stuff that you couldn't normally, you know what I mean? Like everybody, you know, you got old, you got older people that've been in jail for years that you know, love music and, you know, couldn't find this song or that song. So now you got, you got access to mostly everything that you've been looking for for years. So people, you know, just went, wow, man, it was, it was a wild time. That's all you heard was people, yo, who sang this? Yo, yo, you know who sung this song? Shoot, do, you know what I mean? Like dudes is just mouthing songs like, yo, who sing this? You know what I mean? Like, so like it was it was like the ill ill thing, man. Like, you know, everybody hitting the kiosk, going on the kiosk, and, you know, downloading their songs. So, you know, oh like, wow. Yeah, man. So, yeah. Were, were people per chance were people like downloading your songs and stuff around you or, or listening to your old your older albums? Yeah, you know, that was a given. You know, you like you like, you know, dudes cause cause it's so easy now. Like, you know, you could like oh, just show yo G I'm gonna get your stuff too, man. Yo, what's the name of that album? You know, stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, man, you know, I was, I was definitely, you know, but you know, you know, I was there with brothers. So, you know, they didn't really, they didn't really stress it like that. You know what I mean? I, eventually, eventually dudes got around to it. Like, yo, yeah. And I, by the way, I bought your, your album, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, I had found the Ghetto Legend album. They didn't have the Child of the Ghetto album on there, by the way. Like, I was like looking for that. That was the first thing I looked for when when when, they, when we got the kiosk. They they didn't have that on there. It was certain certain, certain albums they didn't they didn't have on there. So 
but they did have they did have ghetto legend i found it after a while just surfing i plug i put i plug one of the songs in and the whole album popped up. I was like, wow, you know? I didn't even know they had that that kind of thing in prison. I know when I was talking to Ethan, he had mentioned something called like JPay or whatnot. I don't even know. What, what is JPay? It's a uh, kind of a kiosk system where you can get your emails, you know, plug plug, uh, plug in and, and, and download your songs and all of that. You know what I mean? It was silver. You know what I mean? And you, and you could put your, 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 your tablet like on a little port that they had and you plug the tablet in. And then you download your messages, you download pictures, videos, and then they also had the you know the the option to go into the, the to the music. They had like a wide arrangement of music, and I, and that's where I found a lot of the, a lot of the music, more, more all of the music actually for uh, the influential album. You know, after I got over, you know, after after I got over buying all the music, well, I never really got over. Buying all of the music that I that I wanted because it was you know so many songs that you can you can get, you know I started I started also you know looking for beats so you you could just type in you know it didn't have like a sophisticated search engine like out here like you know you could actually look for certain, you know specific stuff like so you had to like put in like hot beats or you know dope beats or you know what I'm saying crunk beats you know like you just had to make stuff up like beats that make you you know, just nod your head, like, you know, you type that in and, and stuff will pop up. And then you just, could, you know, you had to go through stuff. And, you know, I just went through the whole process, man. Like, you know, you got, you in jail, you got, you know, you don't got, you know, all the, you know, you know, you're not, your, your time is not that occupied. So, you know, so, you know, I had time to look through, you know, beats and that's how I, was, I found a lot of the stuff, man. Most, all of it, like I said. Your last album was in 2010 and then, Fast forward to at some point, what when did you decide that you wanted to actually record a new album? In 2022, I recorded I recorded a joint with, with my bro Legacy Ty. This joint called um uh, uh Nothing to Lose, excuse me. Um it was it was a joint called Nothing to Lose. He had a beat, he played, he played, he played over the phone, he called me. I mean, I called him. And, you know, he used to, you know, just play me beats. He, he's a producer, so he played me beats. And he was like, yo, that man, can't wait till you come home, man. I got this joint for you right here. Listen to this, one of them things. So he plays it. And I'm like, yo, man, it'd be dope if we could record that over the phone. You know what I mean? And he was like, well, we should do that. You got to figure out how to do it. He's like, I don't know how to do it. You know, and that was another misconception people had. You know, they thought you can just call, you know, record some lyrics, and then a person can just put them onto a beat. You know what I mean? But it wasn't, it wasn't, it's not that simple. You know what I'm saying? We even tried it, the kid, me and him, me and Todd, uh, Legacy Todd. When you call somebody and you and you play a, and you play a, a track in the background, if they playing the track in the background, you can hear it. But then when, once you start talking, it cancels the, the sound out in the background. So if you try, if you're trying to record like that, is it doesn't work. You know what I mean? So if you call, if you call in and they play the beat and they hooked up to the studio, everything is everything is gravy, it's Gucci, everybody you ready to go. Once once they play the beat and you start rhyming, you can't hear the beat. You know what I mean? So so you know I, that's why that's how we figured out it wasn't as simple as that. You know, and I and my and my uh, my wife, she had already. Oh, pre, but prior to that, I had did a a song, you know, over the over the phone to the special delivery beat and we hooked up with Ethan, you know what I mean? And so Ethan, Ethan, um, you know, I already knew that you can actually get it done, but, and I knew, I knew a guy, I was, you know what I mean? I was that guy who knew a guy, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, yeah, man, yo, yeah, I know a guy that can actually do that. You know what I mean? I called him, you know what I mean? And we wound up recording, you know what I'm saying? We, and then we just got up and he was like, yeah, I remember you here, yeah, man. Yo, you want to record something? Da, 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 da. We recorded it and we put it out. If I can make it, if I make it anywhere. Shoes, I ain't got nothing to lose. Just the clothes on my back in these shoes. Cruise, cause I got nothing to lose. You know the next, next step is go a few. Thanks. Uh, 2023, I did a, a couple of more joints with Ethan and my guy, uh, Legacy Ty. So I'm like, yo, you know, I'm starting to, you know, feel my, my artistic, uh, you know, side. I was like, wow, we were able to record. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, that, 
you know, that was the closest thing I had to recording. So after a while, he he was going through some things and I still was, you know, I still had the recording bug. You know what I mean? So I was like, yo, look, you know, I had I had all these beats that I that I had been that I had accumulated over the years. And I had one from a guy named um, uh, Bugger Funk, my man, Nathaniel. And, um, you know, I was like, I, you know, I was like, yo, this this would be something to put out. I called up Ethan. I said, yo, how would you feel? You know, you know, I recorded with you. You know, and we, you know, we did a, you know, we, we did we did a, a song. He was like, yo, that's cool. You know, and I, you know, we did the whole, you know, the whole studio book the session, called them. It came out pretty well. You know, at the time, you know, that was the first time I kind of recorded my own song. This was like by myself. And, you know, oh, wow. so we started. Yeah, so we was like, okay, it was a song called Play That Again. And then we did another song called Bubbly. And so we was like, Yo, why don't we start putting these out? You know what I mean? And and that's really how all of that started. So we, you know, I had I started a label, you know, because you had to be incorporated in order to put stuff onto the uh, you know, onto the websites and all of that stuff. So we started a label. That's how we started Black Market Entertainment, you know, Black Market Group Recordings. We started that. You know, and, and we just start putting music out. And then after a while, we was like, you know, we put out the first EP, play that again EP. It had Bubbly on it and play that again. Then we put out Entrepreneur. It was an EP. So I started putting those, we, we put those out. But after a while, we was like, well, why don't we just put out an album? You know what I mean? So I just started recording. You know, then we was, we was actually using the, the songs that we were recording on the album. You know, since I hadn't been out in a long time, you know, we was like, yo, let's just put them out. As we do, you know what I mean, just to just to have stuff out there, you know what I mean. So we we recorded a, three more songs and we used that as an EP. We put out this the EP called Jesus Peace, and then we put you know we was just we were just putting out EPs, but we intended on you know just comp- compiling everything after we got done. So after we put out the three EPs, we put out the Jesus Peace EP. The uh, actually it was four it was the play that again the. Uh, the uh, entrepreneur, the Jesus piece, and then we put out one last one called "The Only Life I Know," and then we put out another single called uh, "The Rose in the Concrete" single, and then with the you know with the remaining like six or seven songs, we just say, "Yo, we'll put these out on the mm-hmm. album," and then we'll call we we'll just call it an album. What was the recording process like? Because you know, I, I know at the end of the album, you you give a shout out to the people that were like more than helpful in terms of allowing you to use the phone for the time that you had to record. What was the process for you in terms of like your prep, first of all, to actually, you know, get the rhymes ready. So that way when you called Ethan, you were ready to actually deliver them. And then how long were your sessions for? What was your practicing like? Like what, what give us, give us some of the details about that stuff. You know, it was, it was one of those things where, you know, I had to pick a day that was, you know, the best day to record. You know what I mean? Because like, you know, you were in prison, people need to use the phone. You know what I'm saying? So, I used to always pick Sunday, Sunday morning, at eight o'clock, bright in the, bright, excuse me, bright in the early, you know, bright and early. You know what I'm saying? I would like, okay, get up, put a little tag on the phone. Dudes was grown, only grown man, you know what I mean? So you can you can ask like, yo, look, I want to, you know, go at this time. Is that a problem? Anybody, you know, going at this time? And dudes were like, nah, you good? Like, you know, so, you know, it was one of them things that you know, dudes want to see. You know, they wanted this. You know, you doing something. You know, dudes was, you know, you know, for it. Like, yo, that's what's up. Do do your thing. You know, be mindful that, you know, don't be on too long, but do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? It was one of them things. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, I, the longest the longest I was on the phone one time recording was like maybe like three, almost four hours. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, man. I did that, you know, for, for you know, about, you know, two or three months, you know, Every Sunday, I would get up, go, you know, I, during the during the week, I would practice, you know, the stuff that I had, you know, ready. You know, I you know I used to write everything on the tablet, you know, so I would I would get everything ready, you know, play the beats, you know, you could play the beat on the tablet with the headphones and you know practice. I had a little area where I, I would go practice. So when it was time to um, you know, record, it was like, you know, it was, it was just, you know, all I had to do was, you know, spit the rounds, you know what I mean? And, you know, you know, you get your, yo, let me do that again. And, oh, yo, let me, let me try that again. And, you know, stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, you know, and then I knew, you know, you had to be mentally prepared to, you know, just, you know, get, get it done as quick as possible. Right, right, right. 
Yeah. But sometimes, sometimes it took long because, you know, the whole process of, you know, recording over the phone is a little bit different from recording, you know, in the studio because like you still have to, you know, graft everything, place everything onto the beat because it's a little delay. So you gotta, you know, you know, I gotta talk to Ethan. Ethan, yo, move that over a little bit. It's just not really in pocket, you know, the stuff like that, you know, they're doing the, you know, the choruses and stuff like that. You know, you gotta make sure you get the right tone. It's not, it's not the same as being in the studio somewhat. It is for the most part, but it's some certain things that you have to you gotta make sure you you know you you um you tend to, you know. Also I'm curious, like you're recording on a phone, are are people around you able like it's not like you go to a studio and you're by yourself. Like like are people around you listening as you're re- doing these recording sessions or are you like in a solo area? We have phone booths that um that you would that you was that that, that you could just go into and um you know see, you know, you could close the door. So what I would do is I would I would get up in the morning, I would grab like like three or four blankets, some towels, and I would go in there. You know, I would kind of soundproof the Oh the, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I would soundproof the the top so people couldn't like, you know, come, you know, the sound wouldn't come out, and you know, I couldn't hear anything. Then I would also uh uh like lace up the, the like the little cracks in the in the phone booth. I would you know, plug them, plug them in with the with the towels, and you know, you know, I just I just made my own you know environment, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a, and then so you know you can't really hear too much, you know what I mean? And, and you know, for the most part. Oh man, that's fascinating because I, I definitely had to do like makeshift recording booth uh, with like my couch and blankets before, so uh, that's yeah, yeah. quite the ingenuity to to do that in prison as well. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. It was it was. It was a heck of it was a heck of an experience. That's why, you know that that's what that album to me, you know, it's kind of a chronic a chronicle. You know what I mean? I can I can I can remember, you know, the whole you know the situations, you know that you know that was surrounding those those um, recordings. You know, I want to talk about the the actual album itself. I think an interesting choice was you actually decided not to uh, curse at all on this album for the most part. Like like what went into that decision? I just don't really curse. You know, I can express myself. You know, I guess in, in a way where I don't I don't need to do that. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was just it was natural. You know what I mean? You know, I had some I had some curses on there that, you know, that, you know, I, I let people hear and they were like, yo, look, watch, you? you know, and, I, you know, and, and, you know, I believe that, you know, sometimes you, you, you might need to curse to get to get your point across and for people to understand what you what you're trying to say. But I also believe that, you know, too much of it. You know, kind of, you know, dampens your, your, you know, your energy. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you know, a lot of curses have like a negative, you know, connotation to them. Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, I try to keep my, you know, I try to keep a positive energy. It, it also, you know, resonates in the music that I make. You know. Well, it's interesting you say uh, positive energy because I there have been other artists that have gone to jail before that have you know, recorded things here and there. And even with that, a lot of that st- still steers co- towards like, you know, talking about violence and drugs and banging a bunch of chicks and all this other stuff. When I saw you had an album, I didn't know what to expect in terms of the content. And then listening to it, it was like very, very positive leaning. So like, is that just your general demeanor or like what what steered you to make this a more positive record as opposed to like, you know, you're in jail uh, for due to negative circumstances, you could have easily gone in a different direction. Why did you choose to do it in a positive one? You know, with being in jail in my situation is is obvious. Like you you heard about it. You know why I'm in jail. You know, you know that I'm in jail. You know what I mean? You know what goes on, what could happen in jail. You know what I mean? So like why I talk about it. If you listen to the album, you you can tell that, you know, it goes down. Like I'm talking, I'm talking about certain things. I got jail dudes on the phone, you know, doing skits. Like if you don't know, if you don't think you know, it's, it, it, what you think is going on in here, then, you know, why, why, then you don't need me to explain it. You know, it's other things that we can talk about, things that we, that we have on our minds, things that, you know, we, we've been through things, you know, situations, you know, is you know, you know, it, to me that it didn't seem like something that people needed to hear from me. My thought was if he weren't recording this from jail, 
I wouldn't be able to tell in terms of the subject matter content that was any different from like like your earlier Bad Boy records. Like you have party songs, motivational songs, songs that are for the women. And so it's like you still get the same feel of like, oh, this is that. like I said, I've been bumming it nonstop because it, it just feels like it was just like a regular release. It just so happens that it was on the phone. Oh, wow. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, man. I ain't going to lie. You know, I listen to it, too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I want to record it. I want to re-record it sooner or later, you know? Yeah, I think I was telling Ethan, like, the, the phone aspect, it just feels like the it, it becomes like the aesthetic of the album. Like, when I hear it now, it's like I, I barely realize, like, oh, it was on the phone because it just I'm so tuned into like what you were saying and then like the variety of beats that you picked for this was also absolutely incredible like how did you decide what beats you were going to use and then how did you decide what songs you were going to use because if you had like all these songs for all these years what made you pinpoint certain ones to actually use for the record i don't know that's kind of you know after a while it becomes like kind of instinct you know what i mean to 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 make a certain sound or or or, or to to have a certain element with the albums that you put out, you know, you'll be like, okay, I need something, you know, up tempo now. You know what I mean? I've been doing all of these these, these kind of slower tempo songs. You know what I'm saying? So that's how a lot of that came about. Like I was like, okay, I need something, you know, with like a, a, a little, you know, let's get let's pick it up around here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm doing all of these different this, you know, this this these bassy songs. Let's do something with some, you know, a little brightness to it, or you know, stuff like that. Like that was that was basically, you know. And then I and then I had I had a lot of you know a lot of help as far as like you know the brothers around me they knew that I was putting you know music out you know brothers that I that I dealt with you know that I talked to so I would ask them yo how would you think about this beat or you know and they would just you know people people are not you know don't have a shortage of opinion you know what I mean so they would be like they would be like yo nah you can't be using stuff like that I'm telling you this is what you need to be you know what I mean so I used to gauge a lot of you know, I would I would check the temperature on you know a lot of the stuff that I had, but especially the younger generation. Like I would I would definitely, you know, d- you know uh, intentionally solicit them, you know, to see what, what they what they what they felt about certain things. Yo yo G, come here for a minute. Yo, how, what you think about this beat? Yo nah nah that that ain't it. That's not what they doing. The kids they wanna they wanna you know what I mean? They wanna you know what I'm saying? And I'm like oh word. I said I said all right. So how about this? You know stuff like that. You know I had so many beats. Like I said, I used to buy beats. Just, just, just to, you know, just to listen to, and you know, I didn't really, you know, it was like kind of like a shot in the dark. Sometimes I would buy stuff and not, you know, be like, damn, why did I even buy this? You know what I'm saying? So man, sometimes, right. I get it. you know, I would, I would, you know, I would, stri- I would strike gold. Like, yo, you hear this? This is crazy. So that's how a, a lot of that stuff got picked. Like, just it was like kind of a consensus, you know. <laughs> like seriously, I, I would just ask dudes, yo, how would you think about this? And you know, once, t- you know, and I used to play my music a lot. You know, on on uh, shuffle, you know what I mean. So I would I would put the music that I had. I had about you know three or three thousand songs or something like that on my tablet. You know, I'd be in the room or, or wherever I was at, and I had a we were in like two man, three man room sometime. You know what I'm saying? And I would um, just play the stuff. I have it out loud, playing it, and I would just you know go about my day or go about whatever I'm doing in the room. And you know, song and the beats would just come on because they were on the playlist. That helped me pick a lot of beats too because like. When you have songs playing in the uh, selection of other music that's already out, hmm. you know what I mean. When they when they come on, you can kind of gauge whether or not you know they they're like up to par. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just a sound you hear it and you're like, damn, this sound like something that's that's already out. Like you know what I mean? And like that's how we picked a lot of a lot, a lot of those beats. Like they'll come on. And I'm like, damn, you hear that? And my man, my my, my neighbor would be like, yeah, that's 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 fire right there. You know what I mean? Because it just goes, it just goes into the groove of what we was just listening to, like you know what I mean? So that was how a lot of that stuff got picked out too. Oh, it was, it was good that you did surveying too, because like when and listening to the album, like the beats themselves seem very up to date. Like it doesn't feel like you're still stuck in like the early 2000s. It's like, oh, he's he's got the right soul samples, but he's also got like a lot of the like the the influential song. That sounds like a like a beat in the song that I could be hearing in the clubs like right now. And it's like, you know, it's good that you were able to keep up with that still. That's a funny, that's a funny story. Like we um I'm not gonna mention the dude's name, you know what I'm saying? But we had we had the beat for for the song. So we we inquired about the beat, you know what I mean? So I, I caused we caused the dude up, you know, <laughs> shoot him an email. Yo, look, man, we could be interested in your beat, man. Um, you know, what what could you do? Get back to us, boom. He hit us back and said, yeah, man, wow, that, you know, I appreciate you liking the beat, man. So, 
So what I'm going to do is, you know, I'll give it to you for 75000 He was like, sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. You know what I'm I said, I'm sorry, what? You know what I mean? I said, bro, you know I'm in, I'm in jail, right? You know that, you know? I mean, you know, that doesn't mean anything like that. Some people might have $75,000 when they're in jail, but but I did You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, um, you know, to, to give, you know, to pay for a beat, you know, that, that's, that was, that was, that was, that was ludicrous. Man. And he didn't want to budge. It was, it was just hilarious. You know what I mean? He was, he just stopped, stopped answering our calls. You know, what we were going to do, we were going to like kind of try to, you know, just kind of give him everything on the, on the back end. He, he told him, he, he told us, he said, yo, yeah, we'll do it. You know, all right. You know, and then he just like kind of just ghosted us. Like, you know what I'm saying? But that's here nor there. So we couldn't use that beat. Right. So, so, we did. We wound up using the beat, another beat, for my man Ryan Sells, and um, he he didn't. Once we we recorded it, we couldn't find him. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, I hope he's all right. You know, shout to shout to him. You know what I'm saying? We, so we 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 tried. We had he had did a couple of other of our of our beats on the uh, on the on the album. You know what I mean? Hmm. So you know we, we was like, yo, this is a shoe and we just record it and then find them and then. You know, do what we do, we get the golf track. So now we got the beat. I mean, we got the song, influential. You know what I mean? It's like it's jumping. We like, yeah, this is okay. This is all right. We doing it, and, and, and we couldn't find the dude. So we was like, yo. So now we were just stuck with the song. We like, oh my, you know what I mean? So I hollered at a couple of people. We couldn't find them. You know, and then and then and then. So I, I'm just looking for beats one day. And, and it just the song just like a, like it, it was on a, a person who I already had beats from. So I go back on his webs on his catalog and I look and he got the beat up. Like I never seen it before. It was a beat, you know what I'm saying? So I go and I listen. I'm like, yo, this could go to the influential joint. And that's just how I went. <laughs> and I, I let and I, again I let people hear it. I was like, yo, what you think about this? And dudes was like, nah, this this right here is that knock right here. This is like that party feel good, you know. Malibu joint, you know, and then you know, we just wind up using the joint, man. That's what's up. Is that and what what made you end up going with that as your album title as well? It just was one of them things, man. Somebody somebody said that to me when I was locked up. It was like, yo, man, you 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 influential. You one you one of you like you one of the inf- most influential people in jail. I was like, what? I'm like, you know, I gotta go wash my clothes in the sink right now. Like, we like, excuse me while I go, you know, you know, scrub the scrub the uh. The, the, the kitchen sink because the, 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 the kitchen counter because today is my day to, to, to clean the kitchen. So, yeah. speak, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, you know, you say I'm influential, really? You know what I'm saying? It just stuck with me. I was like, you know, it just bugged me out that he said that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, and I was like, all right, you know, you know, so I, you know, and then, you know, as time went on, you know, I was like, yo, that'd be a dope name for an album. You know what I'm saying? When I, um, when I, when we did the skit in the beginning, you know, we um, you know, we kind of had to, you know, just 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 figure out a way to, you know, you know, bring it into put it into play, like you know, what I'm saying. So that was how that was why we did it like that. But that was, yeah, but that was how that 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 name really came about. There's a few uh, things that you touch upon on the album. Uh, one of one of which is um, there's a lot of uh, and not in a preachy way, but there are definitely some. Uh, mentions of religion in terms of the, your relationship with God, uh, like on songs like Jesus Peace and God Heard. Ain't them now high enough when I'm climbing for diamonds and pearls. Yo, I need Jesus Peace. Look at my Jesus Peace. Before I meet Jesus, please. I pray to the needy streets. What was your journey in terms of you getting reconnected with God and then the impact that that had on the stuff that you were writing? I, re- I started realizing, you know, and seeing things more, more, more down that, you know, to that, down that vein, you know, more so when I was in, when I was during, during my, uh, my prison, my prison sentence, you know, what I was learning about was helping, you know, was, 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 was connecting, you know, me to, you know, uh, you know, just a, just a, just a, a higher connection, a higher, you know, energy, you know what I mean? I wanted to express that, you know, in the, in, in some, in, in the, in the songs that I was using, you know, uh, doing, I didn't want to, tell anybody what to do you know i just wanted to show them what i was what i was seeing and what i was what i was experiencing so a lot of those songs were just you know just just you know just my 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 take and my rendition and my you know 
you know, my experience. Yeah, I could feel that throughout the, I mean, that adds to the positivity of the album that I definitely felt throughout when you, like even the album starts out, the first lines, like praise the creator, you know? So it's like, that was definitely a, a theme I noticed, but again, it didn't feel like you were trying to overpower the listener with like, you got to believe like I believe. It, it really did feel more like this is the journey that I've come to based on what I've been through. I know I ain't got to worry, you got to hurry because God hurt. All I do is say grace, I keep faith because I know God hurt. Because all my enemies all around me, I know God hurts. Now I know I'm in God's hurt. I was trying to outrage on it. And then another thing you talk about, uh, there's a song on here that I, I, one of my favorite tracks is called Get That Out Your Life. And when I first played it through, I really thought like, okay, he's talking about a toxic woman because, hey, we've all experienced women that have been toxic at times or whatever. And then I get to the end and you said like, oh, this is for everybody that had gone through addiction. And I was like, what is he talking about? This goes out to everybody suffering from addiction. Stay strong. And you can tell that addiction. You think that. And then I rewind back and it was like, oh, snap. Like everything he's talking yeah. about is about addiction. I thought I'd never leave you because I used to grieve you. I couldn't deceive you. I hit you from the people, but I bond couldn't be equal. Because you were illegal, it was wrong for me to bring you to that club where they could see you. You went through your own struggles with addiction. And so, like, what was that journey like for you? And then how did that translate into you being able to make a metaphor of a song about it? It was just something that, you know, I just needed to to, to express. Like, I wanted, I didn't want the album to just, you know, be, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make meaningful songs, you know, so to speak. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to just keep doing, you know, singles and, you know, stuff that, you know, you know, that, you know, anybody could relate to. I wanted to. I mean, I wanted to do songs that people could relate to, obviously, but, you know, certain songs were personal that, I, you know, I wanted to have some personal songs on there as well. You know what I mean? So, you know, I wanted to do it also in a way that everybody could relate to that. You know what I mean? So the way I did it, I didn't want to just talk about my experience and, like, you know, what I've been through. So I just did it in a metaphor, you know, with a met use the metaphor, you know, of trying to, you know, under, you know talk to you know, the addiction, so to speak, you know, in a way that, you know, look, that seemed per like, make, you know, I try to personify the, the the addiction. I was a theater major in college. So as a person that, that, that very much appreciates creative writing, I was like, this is like, this is a, a stellar, a stellar bit of writing on the album, is especially like just the way you came with the metaphors of it. And then it's like, because I could see both things of it being like literally a toxic woman and also like coming down from addiction, you know, like it was incredible. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. And that meant that song meant a lot to me, man. Especially when I heard it, when I first heard it, because we had a um, we had a we had a a, a, a guy shout the DJ Nut on ninety one point three and um in Poughkeepsie. He used to play the music, you know. He played a lot of the music that we did, you know. He he played it on the radio one time, um, one time, and it and it just it just like hit me so hard, you know what I mean? To to hear. You know, you know my my struggle. Like that's that song is really, really my struggle with with you know with it, with addiction. Like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. the last verse, you know, um, you know, uh, 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 look at the look look at the look at the look at the happy couple. Check out the flashy buckle, but look a little closer. Ashy knuckles, and he got on last week nasty club clothes. That ain't really love, yo. But underneath the shell, you could tell that we cut throat. You know what I mean? A love affair was toxic. The toxicology says suboxone and some oxycontin don't know what I'm popping. You know what I mean? Like it was that was real stuff. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And now I, you know, now I had to drop it. Vicious cycle. I must have been a cycle. The evil let my life go so far down the rabbit hole. I even let my wife go. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that it was really that really happened to me. Like you know what I mean? So I'm like, you know, they hear it. You know, on on you know on 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 the radio, it was like it, it, it was really like it really it really hit me hard, man. Because I and I and I I thank the creator that I was able to express, you know, myself, you know, like that. And I don't know if anybody knew what I went through or what I you know had been through that. So it felt good to get that off my chest, and 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 it felt even better to have it, you know, so somebody else can learn from it or or. or or just listen to it, you know? Now, you, you also have what I consider to be, uh, like, skill tracks on here where it's like you're just basically just showing off. Like, uh, you have Stop Blocking My Blessings, you have Head Start, you have Jesus Peace, where it's like you're trying out different flow patterns. The scariest catching new ones. When your old friend won't admit he knew you. 
Out the DR, they a Betty Booker Half of my life been a heavy user Now they just say I be getting to it Cause lately I don't do messy Cause messing with messy ass petty They just abuse ya Gave him an inch and they kept the ruler In terms of getting into the groove of things Like how was that? Cause I remember I, I heard an Instagram uh, sh uh, show that you did where you were talking about how like you were you know you were out there like literally like sweating it out as you were rapping like what was it like getting back into form of trying to rap and do these various uh, tracks where you're trying to show off your skill set? I think a lot of it had to do with you know kind of you know staying healthy you know what I mean like I, for the most part you know I had I had a lot of college that I was doing so I didn't always get to go to the yard like the way I wanted to especially towards the end of the bed but you know I used to you know I used to jog and you know you know, do my little, my little, uh, well, I still, you know, do jog and, you know, for the most part, like, you know, my, my regimen, you know, pull up, split, push up, sit up, stuff like that. So when it was, when it was time to record, you know, I just had a lot of energy, you know what I mean? So it was, it was, it wasn't, you know, as, as difficult as it, it, you might, uh, you know, one might, might, might seem. I never really like went a long period of time where I didn't, you know, at least, you know, write a rhyme or say a rhyme. If I wasn't saying some something that I wrote or singing something that, you know, I was working on, like I was listening to regular music, you know what I mean? And so, you know, I was singing that or saying that, you know what I mean? So, you know, when it's time to get in the booth, you know, you just you just kind of kick in the this 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 you know this this gear, you know. And yeah, no, I feel like so I record stuff myself. I get like once you're in the the mind frame, it's just like that's all your focus is, is just to try to just get it done. Yeah. So you know, it wasn't it wasn't really it wasn't really that that much of a you know a task to to get in the artist mode, you know, so to speak. I had to, you know, I had to understand that you know I needed I needed to. Um, you know, have my, 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 my voice in order, you know what I'm saying? So that was, that was probably, but like I said, like it, it was kind of, it was the way it happened. It kind of happened progressively. So I, I, I was able to get into it more and more. The songs became, you know, became more, you know, intricate. And it became, you know, I started to do more things as, 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 you know, songs went, you know, the time, the time went by. So. Did, did you find that it was um, like recording as a, as an older guy was different from recording when you were uh, first starting out? Uh, aside from the phone thing, no, really, it wasn't. It wasn't too big of a difference. You know what I mean? It was kind of, you know, I kind of knew more at, at, at this age. I, I kind of know more than I than I knew then. I'm more aware of, as you know, when you're young, you know, you kind of know things that you that you don't even know you know. Like, you know what I mean? And you just do things naturally that. You know, most people, you know, have to analyze, you know, once you, you know, once, you know, at a certain point. So I probably did things when I was young that I didn't realize I was doing, you know what I mean? Like as far as like, you know, delivery and stuff like that. But as I got older, I realized, you know, I was aware of my breathing. I was aware of enunciation. You know what I mean? I was aware of, you know, different things. So it was like, you know, you know, that, that was, that was the, uh, you know, the, 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 probably the, you know, the the uh, plus that I had as, you know, being older, you know, older in recording, you know. At the time that you started recording these songs, had you, A, had you yet applied for clemency, and B, did you know that there was a chance of you getting out, or you just, and, and if not, as you were recording these songs, what was your future plans? Were you going to just continue recording from behind bars and put them out? Like, what was your, what was the situation? In April, April 23rd of 2000, I'll never forget the day I got an email from my, from my, my uh, lawyer, uh, Steven Zeidman. He, he sent me an email on April 23rd of 2022. You know, I was like, wow, you know, this is, you know, wow, you know, wow, we might, you know, get some clemency. It was, you know, it was just. It was just one of the things, yo. You know, you know, it's worth a, it's worth a try. Fast forward to twenty three, you know, I was I was recording, you know, but you know, I didn't I didn't really you know feel like, you know, I didn't I didn't know what was gonna happen with that, you know what I mean? So it was just something that I was doing, you know, it just it just kind of happened that way. Like you know, I just started, you know, we started recording a little more, um, you know, a little more, uh, uh, uh you know, consistently. So you figure we put out our first release. In 2023, it was about, it was like in May, mm. May 8th, if I'm not mistaken. And then like over the, you know, over the, the, the course of the year, you know, we started, we started, you know, getting, you know, feedback on the clemency. You know, they started telling us, yo, look, um, you know, they started asking us more questions like, yo, so what happened with this? And, 
So we was like, wow, you know, maybe they, you know, maybe they, you know, you know, we started thinking that, you know, this clemency might happen. You know what I mean? But it's still, we you still, we still didn't have the audacity to um, you know what I mean, think that we were gonna like get, like like you know, record the album and yo, know, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna record the album because we because when you come home, it'll be good that you had the album out. Like, we, we wasn't even thinking like that. Like, you know what I mean? We was just thinking like, yo, you know, it's time for you to put something out. We, we got we got music. You know, this will be great. We wrap, you know, we wrap up we wrap up an album, just put it out. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you'll be home. You go to you go to parole next year. We were talking about 2025. We were like, you know, you go to parole. And, you know, at least you could say, yo, I put an album out while I was incarcerated. You know, that's how we were really looking at that. You know, when, when we did get the clemency in 2020, the end of 2023, you know, it was like a plus. Like, we was like, wow. You know what I'm saying? We, we was like, so let's just finish up this album. Even then, the clemency that they gave me, I still wasn't, it still wasn't a, 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 a you know, it still wasn't a um, guarantee that I was going to come, that I was getting out. Because they gave me, you know, they commuted the sentence. But I still had to, you know, I still had to go to, um, you know, to the parole board. So, you know, so they, you know, they, they, um, so we, you know, we were still just like, yo, look, it's just great to put the, put the album out. You know, we don't know, you know, and then, you know, so then we just started thinking like that, like, yo, wow, that would be great. You know, you put the album out and then when you, you know, you, if you get out, you know, in a couple of months, you know, you, you know, you could just hit the ground running, you know, stuff like that, you know, that, so it wasn't really, you know, like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't anything that we knew was going to happen. We had faith that, you know, whatever happened, you know, we were going to be all right. And then, you know, sooner or later, you know, I would, you know, get out by the grace of the creator. But, you know, it did. Well, it so just, the, time, the timing just happened to line up. Yeah. Yeah. It just lined, it just, it just lined up, you know, with, with, to where we was like, you know, wow, you know, we just put the album out and then, you know, we're not going to, you know, if you do get granted clemency, so that's what we told these. That's what we told ourselves. Like, you know, if you do get granted clemency, we're not gonna put any more music out over the phone. We'll just let the stuff that we got out marinate, and you know, that'll be that. You know, you'll be home in a, in a couple of months after that. But they had me. They had me set to come home in July if I got this the, the clemency granted. You know, but I also I also had got this. Uh, this 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 uh, time cut because I had you know you get you get this thing called the LCTA. They have like three two different ways you can get it. You can you can you can um you can get it by being in this program called IPA to where you like you like a, a teacher's aide or something like that. You can do that for six months and then they they take off or you can just do it and they take off just some time. Or you could get credits from college. If you got more than 25 credits and you've been in college more than two years, you could get. So I got it because of that. So that took six months off of my time. So when they gave me the clemency, that put me in July. But the, the LCTA thing put me in January. Oh wow. You know what I mean? So so when I so I was basically, I basically had a date that I was passed by the time I went to the parole. By the oh, time wow. I went, by the, yeah, by the time I went to parole, it was March, and my date was actually in in January of of, of 2024. January 20, January 15th, 2024 was when I when I was set to be released, which was like just ill. So I, when I pointed that out to my lawyer, he was like, "Yeah, you're right. Like, you know, if, if they do grant you clemency, you're kind of basically if they do grant you a uh, parole, you're basically you're out of here. Like, you know what I mean? Because you're supposed to have been out of here, you know what I mean? So, so that's what happened when I got when I got when they granted me the parole. It was like, yo, you don't, you know, you don't have to wait until July, you know what I mean? So they was like, you know, they basically gave me thirty days. Only reason they gave me thirty days after the uh, parole hearing, after the parole decision, was for them to find my housing and all of that. So, you know. And then they and then they sped it up even more. They was like, "Yo, look, we found this house. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so you don't even have to wait the thirty days. You know what I mean?" So they was like, "That's why oh, they gave the date of the fourth. It was like two. I got I got the decision probably on the twenty uh, uh the 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 uh the twenty ninth or something like that of January of of, of March. 
when I got a decision on the, on the 29th of March, they said that I'll be going home on the 29th of April. And then 20, and then, and then ne the next week, April 2nd, they called me down to the office and said, yo, sign out. I was like, sign out? No warning, said, that's it? <laughs> yo, what happened on the 29th? I said, you know, I got to, you know, I got to arrange this. This is, this is crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got, you know, I, I got to finish college. Uh, you know, I got to arrange my, my re-entry. I want to, you know, make sure. It was like, look, man, you're going home in two days. So whatever you got to do, you got to do it in two days, man. So they said, you know, they, they made me sign the papers. They said, you sign here. They said, it was a Tuesday. They said, you're going home on Thursday. So I don't know if you know, like, you know, I was, you know, after being locked up 13 years, you got all type of, of property stuff that you, you know, so I was just giving stuff away, man, quick, man, fast. And, you know, I had to, you know, I couldn't even really, you know, you know, believe, you know, like it, it was so amazing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's how that happened. That's how I, you know, just, you know, like that. Like, I didn't even know I was coming home. You know what I mean? And, 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 and I just wanted to, you know, just just coming home. That's wild. So from, from the time you got out, how long was it to you, like, hit a recording studio? Oh, man, I think I went to the studio. You figure I came home on a, on a Thursday, uh, on the 4th of April. The first time I went to the studio, and it, when it, this is a great landmark, Crazy creator. The first time I went to the studio was the day of the eclipse. Oh wow! Yeah, because because I talked about it in one of the raps. I was, you know, I said, yeah, we're gonna turn the lights out today. I was like, yeah, you know. I said, yeah. No. I said, don't look directly at us if you see us. You know what I'm saying? You know, I was just bugging out, but I but I I said that because of the um, you know, the eclipse. You know what I'm saying? That was going on that day. So whatever day that was, I think that was the, the eighth of, of of April. I think so. Yeah. Now that you're out, what are your next steps in terms of your recording career, in terms of the albums and stuff like that, in terms of uh, like performing? Like what, what are your next steps in terms of that kind of stuff? You know, right now I'm just putting together this album, man. I put I put an uh, album together, you know what I'm saying? You know, chronicalizing, you know, the whole experience, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my whole experience of, you know, being being locked up, you know, and coming home. We did a couple of songs just to, you know, you know, I wanted to feel the booth out again, see how it, you know, Stuff that I was working on would come out, you know, in the real studio. You know what I'm saying? So I did a few songs. You know, I ran into a couple of my brothers that you know, you know that I that I knew from back in the days that was that was that was doing music. Uh, you know, I did a couple of songs with them. You know, and um, you know, that was really it. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know, you know, saturate things with, you know, songs that you know we we didn't have. You know, a project for. You know what I mean? So, you know, now what I'm doing now is I'm just putting together that album, you know, and then we just going to, you know, put that out, you know, be on the lookout for that. You know, that should be that should be dropping soon. You know, so that's probably the first project you're going you gonna, to you gonna hear from me. I've been to your Instagram. So I know that you've been uh, recording stuff and putting out various singles and whatnot. So how does it feel to have like your newer stuff back on the radio? Oh, man, it's great. You know, it's, it's great. It's, it's you know, you, you put you put music together. And you know, you you know, you know, you know, you hope to, you know, hear it and it hope you know hopes, you know, sometimes you hope that it, you know, it gets popularized, but you know, to hear it, it's always amazing to see how it fits into the puzzle of your life. You know what I mean? When you hear it, you know, in a in a certain context, you know what I mean? So so to hear to hear myself on the radio again, it was it was it was it was like, you know, it kinda it kinda gave me some some uh you know, some footing in a way, like, you know what I mean? Like I, I kind of understood like, okay, you know, this is where I'm at right now. You know what I mean? So, you know, where I go from here, you know, kind of, it kind of gave me a, um, you know, some bearings. Now, where can people find you these days online if they want to connect with you or connect with your music or your various albums? Like where can they find your stuff? Well, you can, you can go, you know, you can come on, uh, you know, the IG and, and, and if you wanted to check the IG out at GDEP official. You know, you can see a lot of the stuff that's happening. And, you know, you can also go on, you know, Spotify, you know, look up G Dep. You know, sometimes if you put, I notice if you put G period space Dep, you find a lot of stuff. If you put G, just Dep, it pop up. You know what I mean? So I mean, you know, you, you just gotta, you know, know it, know it, know what to do. You know, know what you're looking for. You know what I mean? You know, G Dep official. Um, you know, G Dep influential. Ghetto Legend, 
you know what I'm saying? Child of the Ghetto, you know what I'm saying? We got a bunch of a bunch of uh, mixtapes out, Deponomics, Geometry, stuff like that. I mean, you could you could um, you know, you could look on um, you know, you know, like I said, Spotify, iTunes, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Pandora, Title, you know, all of the major platforms. You know, we we kind of we on, so you could find anything at any given time, or you could just holler at you know, you know, your Google. You know, your phone or your, you know, hey, Google, play, you know, G-Dep, influential. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 you know, you'll find it like that. I think you have a clothing line as well, too, right? Yeah, we got, you know, we got some, you know, we, we got a clothing line with the logo you see behind me. You know what I mean? We, gonna, we, we, we trying to, um, you know, we trying to, you know, expand it a little bit. We might take the, you know, the, the depth off and just leave, you know, leave it so we don't, you know, always have that. Like, that. we know, we're just going to play with some certain, you know, some, some ideas, but. You know, it, it, you know, we got that, you know, going on. If you wanna, if you wanna cop a hoodie, we got the, we got the hoodies out and the, the t-shirts and the, you know, and the long sleeve shirts. You know, we got all of that in, in stock. So, you know, if you want to cop, you know, any of that, you could, you know, go on the, the G Dep official, uh, uh, you know, on Instagram and just hit on the link. You could, you could cop any of that. You know, or hit us up. You know, on, um, you know, the email. You know. G Dep, uh, you know, Black Market Group Recordings at gmail.com. You could hit us up. We, we could get anything to you that you need, you know, you know, as far as the, um, the uh, you know, the, the clothing and stuff like that. But lastly, what message or experience do you hope that listeners get from listening to this influential album that you put out? I just want people to understand that, you know, we can, we can, you know, whatever you, whatever you, try to do if I can make an album in jail you know what I mean you know that that lets you know that you know don't you can't let your your, your circumstance define you know what what you what you you know are trying to do you know what I mean you know what I mean so you know if anything if anything you get from that album that's you know you can get that you know you know you 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 know you you just have to you know make make you know, make a way out of out of out of no way if that's if, if that's what you have to do. You know what I mean? The, the, the things I'm talking about on the album aren't necessarily as you know, a, 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 you know, apparent than you know than than the whole album itself. You know, to me, you know, that's I think that would be the main the main takeaway from that. You know what I mean? That that you know, you know, don't let your your circumstance find your, you know, your, your uh, condition. It is definitely a very motivating thing to see that like, yeah, you were, the fact that you were in prison and you didn't have like, you know, a, a proper studio or a microphone set up and still ma- managed to put together like what I consider to be a very outstanding album. I think that in and of itself is, is very motivational. And I'm glad you felt the need to make this body of work in the first place. Ah, I appreciate it, man. Definitely, man. It was a pleasure putting it together too, man. You know, just just being able to put together something that, you know, that that that, that I that I like I said, like I listen to the album too, and that, that's how I look at, you know, hip hop, even music that I make. I make music that I would listen to. You know what I mean? I'm a hip hop fan. You know, you know, so, you know, I'm a hip hop lover. You know what I'm saying? So like, I like to hear music that 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 I like. So even when I make music, I'm 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 holding it to a standard. You know what I mean? I want to thank G Depp and his entire team for allowing this interview to happen. It was truly a dream come true. And for the rest of you, be sure to take a listen to G Depp's album Influential, which you can find right now available on all streaming services. Thank you for watching. I'm APT Songs, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace. Glory, 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 glory.